Come here for a minute. 76 years of vesting. Somebody get a picture of this. Right. Yeah. 38 and 38. We're born in 55. We started the first month of our place in 79. Couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, fine, buddy. You know, we were, we were the Mercury astronauts. There were seven of us in Sports Center. Um, we were hoping to go up and land in the ocean at some point. Um, I don't know if we were John Glenn or Alan Shepard, or you, you know all the names. I think Alan Shepard with the six iron on the moon, I'm going for that one. But um, to quote you and to quote another rock and roll legend, what a long, strange trip it has been. That's for sure. Uh, my life personal and my life professional are, are uh, really in front of my eyes. Our two children, Meredith and Doug, you don't have to stand up, I don't want to embarrass you, and Doug's wife, Claire, uh, they're here tonight. We wish Mom could be here with us. She's here in spirit, and uh, she's happy we're together. So We got Bob Lee hosting. Like we said, we came in in 1979. We were rebels without a clue. We had no idea. I mean, we worked hand in hand for years and years with John Walsh, and it is your time of year, John. Uh, proud to be here with you. <laughs> Raph, I mean, we've been a colleague from the start, and uh, I'll try to end this. Well, it's New York. You're, you're all right tonight. Um, <laughs> Brent, uh, who we didn't see, but I mean, he could command an audience on tape. He's one of my heroes. All of us, we all love Leslie, you know. A lot of us in love with you. You know that, too. So <laughs> nice to see you again. We did meet the night of game six, Carlton Fisk. Pretty good moment. Um, I'm known for football primarily, but Commissioner Seelig, who was running baseball when we saw that Unbelievable night at Cal Ripken. Took a lunch pail and went to work for 14 and a half straight years. Never called in sick, 2131. You know, I, the president mentioned it. We we're crying. We couldn't speak, really. Uh, it's probably the highlight of my career, uh, that baseball game. Uh, it just, it spoke larger than baseball. It was America. It was you go to work and you do your best. And it was. Joe DiMaggio was there representing Lou Gehrig. I mean, you got to be kidding me. You know, my teammate Lou Gehrig, wow. I had never met the president until he put on the headset. I, I mean, I do remember, I'll digress here for a minute. Buck Martinez was announcing the game with me. And before that, about a half hour before, they said, well, we don't know when he's coming in, the third or the fourth inning. I said, come here, Buck. See up there in left field and the lights over there? Mm hmm? Well, see those two guys with the uh, silencers? Um, they got me, okay? Now I want you to look up at the, up at the a warehouse, the scaffolding over there. See those two guys over there? Yeah? Well, they got you. So, <laughs> so if you drop a pen while the president's here, don't make a move for it, all right? <laughs> that, was, that was an amazing, amazing night. Mike Weissman was assistant to the producer he was big time for me when I, I was a runner at that game, NBC, 25 bucks. Got to work at the Patriot games in 75 and 76 when I was around. Mike was nice to me then. I don't forget those things. <laughs> no, he's nice to me now. I'm not implying that you're not. <laughs> um, and to Jack, to Linda, to Stan, congratulations for what you have done for our business because, you know, we, we talk, but we learned that very quickly that without you guys, we're nothing. So congratulations to everybody this evening. Give them all a round of applause. <laughs> On the 10th of 10 speakers, whose idea was that, really? Um, you want Mariano Rivera to come in here and close quickly? Is that what you want? Well, my producer's over there because we were told about five minutes, and most have been about five, and we won't be that little, but um, they're laughing. Chris Berman, five minutes, you gotta be kidding me, right? 
But what did I say all the time? Take it out of weather. Just, just. <laughs> Drop the national map, go right to the forecast, get out. <laughs> You've heard that a million times, Bob. Norby's keeling over over there, Steve. Uh, Axe, you're all laughing. So, you heard me refer to it with Bob, 1979. We were 24. Um, I had long hair, I wish I'd saved some. I had a good late 70s mustache, you know what I mean. It was good. Um, and Chet Simmons, and I don't know if Harriet, his, his, his wife made it, she told me she was gonna try if she's here. We love you, if you're not here, you know I feel that way about you anyway. And Scotty Connell, I saw Bruce tonight. Those two decided that they'd so we're going to hire you for $16,500. You're going to be the junior member. You're going to be the seventh astronaut, you know. Um, the, who knew that 2.30 a.m. doing sports every night could be so much fun? I mean, who knew that? Driving home at 4 o'clock to Naugatuck, Connecticut in an ice storm in January. Who knew that this was freaking great, you know? Who knew that learning the rules of Australian rules football um, with the guy with the hat doing this. And I mean, do you remember that? I mean, it was all right. I mean, there were 36 people on the field at the same time. We didn't know what the rules were. <laughs> we talked about it anyway. I had, the, the Swami always had Essendon over Clarendon. And, and if I won, I added one. Um, I mean, who knew? Who knew that announcing billiards, which I did once, could be fun? Now. I did Legends of Billiards, so I had Minnesota Fats against Willie Moscone. So, that was pretty cool, okay? <laughs> Who knew that announcing darts, which I did once, <laughs> would be really fun? Um, I had a color man, you know, analyze, ooh, go to good follow through, I mean, okay. Um, <laughs> he hit the board, isn't that what he's supposed to do? Not the chandelier, but um, who knew that that would be fun also in some ballroom here in New York with the, with the dart throwers drinking at 9.05 a.m. Um, dark liquor out of tall glasses. Um, here's what I did know, though, way back then in the 80s. If you do something you love with like-minded teammates, who are also doing what they love, and you know that you are, in my case, speaking to people who love the material that you're talking about. They may not love me, but they love sports. How could it not be fun? So I figured this, this is a revelation at three in the morning. This is okay. This is gonna be okay. Um, I mean, it's that simple. We don't do brain surgery. We do sports. I mean, you gotta be accurate. You gotta be respectful, you gotta get it right, but you gotta have fun. Doesn't mean laugh and guffaw, but you gotta have fun doing it. So who knew that that fun of 2.30 a.m. in the winter and darts would lead to 30 plus Super Bowls covering them of fun. Um, 30 plus NFL drafts covering it, almost 40. Um, 30-plus World Series, 30-plus home run derbies, 30-plus U.S. Open golf, 30-plus um, years at NFL game day, which then became an NFL countdown, um, 19 years of NFL primetime, which remains, and a record won't be broken because the rules, not the rules, we have 8,000 channels instead of 60, um, the highest rated sports studio show uh, in the history of cable TV. We got fives, fives. We're doing highlights, fives, okay? <laughs> the re-air at midnight got threes, okay? We'd kill for fives and threes. It, that's a, it, I'm just so proud to be part of that. Uh, who knew that all the fun would lead to 40, almost 40 years of the Swami? I didn't know that. I started it in 79 as a way to do some football at 3 a.m. on a Friday night. And my last year, last year, I had uh, my best year ever. 
Maybe somebody was looking out for me, 51 and 32. And I had New England by six. It didn't look right at 28 to three, but when you know everything, you know everything, right? <laughs> Who knew that this fund would lead to, I don't know, 1,500 nicknames? I have no idea. Bert be home by 11. I mean, I, every kid has heard it, every parent said it. Um, football, the Andre Bad Moon Rising, you know, it, it, he tattooed it on his arm in the pre-tat days, I might add. Um, <laughs> even golf, you know, ground control to David Toms. I mean, we, it was just, it just... <laughs> the stuff you come up with at 3 a.m. and then it, if it works, you go with it. People sent lists, fans sent lists of 100. If I laughed reading it, it was on TV. I mean, I had ghost writers in 50 states and Canada. It was awesome. Um, I mean, who knew that it would lead to countless, just fun, doing darts would lead to countless, he could go all the ways or back, back, backs or, um, 4,000 sports centers? I don't know. What do we put the no I, We have no idea, right? 4,000, 5,000? I, I don't know. A lot, okay? A lot of whoop, which I just stole from the three, three studios, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but we never saw any of that coming. But when it came, like many in the room, I went with it. I just went with it. And I should say we went with it, right? We all went with it at our place. We're still going with it at ESPN. I'm proud of that. You know, by covering sports, all of us in the room that do that, whatever you do, I happen to be a qu the, the quarterback. I get more credit or blame, but that's not the point. But all of us who work in the sports business covering it have a very rare opportunity. Because I do believe, and I felt this for a long time, and it's certainly topical today, that sports is kind of like a place not very far from where we are now, Ellis Island. It's one of the last great melting pots of the United States. Um, it knows no socioeconomic boundaries. Um, old, young, white, black, yellow, uh, uh, male, female, rich, poor, you put whatever you want on it, it doesn't matter. You can have the same conversation with someone from any group on yesterday's game. You know, it, it's, it brings everyone together. And in this time where we are now, and I'm far from preaching, but if we have a dialogue, isn't that what we're looking for? Well, sports can give it and has given it to us. And I hope we all use it as broadcasters, players, fans, administrators. It, 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 it's just an amazing opportunity. I, I, I remember one game, you know, you do a game, I did baseball every week for about 20 years, 15, 20 years. And you're going into a city the night before and you want to get And I remember specifically it was Cleveland, the Indians, they were good. Um, all those teams, Bell and all and Bayer, and all those guys. Um, but I got in a cab, it's a pretty long cab ride from the airport to downtown, and it was an elderly cab driver. He had the game on. I landed about the fourth inning the night before. <laughs> Don't laugh. Some of my producers think, what, you landed in the fourth inning the night you were doing the game? But, um, <laughs> but it was the night before. And I said, well, you must be a big Indians fan. And he goes, well, I... I'm in the cab at night. I said, do you go to any games? No, but I listen to every game, and I, my father listened to, I listen to every game. I've listened to them for 40. I said, so. And we started talking about the Indians. I remember this specifically. And in that 35 minutes or whatever it was to get to the hotel, I had done more research than I could have by reading four hours of stuff. It, it, I mean, just happenstance, cab driver, game on the radio. So that's my point. You know, when I got into this business, and I think I speak for everybody, when we got to this business, you always hope you have the respect of those you work with and those you work for, right? You always hope that. You always hope that you earn the respect from 
people, colleagues, who are doing the same job as you at other places. Um, it doesn't have to all be TV, writers, those cover. You hope you get that respect over time. What I hoped, and I didn't know that we would get, is the respect of those that you cover, because that goes such a long way. They're lifelong friendships that we all have made. Just because we're trying to do a good job and they recognize it just as they're trying to throw for 400 yards or, or hit 330. Um, so what tonight's honor, the Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame says is that maybe I did it. Uh, maybe we achieved that. I, I don't know, but the ballot's in, it's too late. Um, so I'd like to accept this award on behalf of everybody that I have worked with and everybody that I continue to work with at ESPN um, because their mantra has always been the same. We're sick and tired of making you look good. And um, you made me look pretty good for, for 38 years. So um, I went a little long. Weather is completely canceled. And uh, <laughs> 60 Minutes is next. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>